Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, today we celebrate the 22nd Tuesday of Ordinary Time, and the church today remembers St. Seraphia. St. Seraphia was born at Antioch of Christian parents who, were flying from the persecutions of Adrian, went into Italy and settled there. Her parents dying, Seraphia was sought in marriage by many, but having resolved to consecrate herself to God alone, she sold all her possessions and distributed the proceeds to the poor. Finally, she sold herself into a voluntary slavery and entered the services of a Roman lady named Sabina. The piety of Seraphia, her love of work, and her charity soon gained the heart of her mistress, who was not long in becoming a Christian. Having been denounced as a follower of Christ, Seraphia was condemned to death. She was at first placed on a burning pile, but remained uninjured by the flames. Almost despairing of being able to inflict death upon her, the prefect Beryllus ordered her to be beheaded, and she revealed, received the crown which she so richly merited of martyrdom. Her mistress gathered her remains, interred them with every mark of respect. Sab Sabina, meeting with a martyr's death a year later, was laid in the same tomb with her faithful servant. So St. Seraphia, who died in 259, we ask you for your piety and your love of our Lord to please, please pray for us today. Let us begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, bless us with the wisdom to praise you in spirit and in truth, so that by following your holy will, we may gain eternal salvation. Amen. And dear brothers and sisters, let us take a moment, confess our sins to God in ways that we have failed him and our neighbor in thought word, deed, and omission, so that we may worthily participate in this holy sacrifice. Please now make an examination of your conscience. Let's say together the second form of the Confidier found on page 66. I confess to Almighty God in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned through my own fault, in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done or failed to do. I ask the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. For your penance, I would ask you to say two Hail Marys. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And may our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me, I absolve you from all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The decree of the Lord is trustworthy, giving wisdom to the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The command of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eye. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Christ eleison, Christ eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, your Son taught us that our inward disposition is far more important than our outward behavior alone. Help us to submit to all your precepts, not grudgingly out of necessity, but because we acknowledge your love for us. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. 
a reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the Spirit scrutinizes everything, even the depths of God. Among men, who knows what pertains to the man except his spirit that is within? Similarly, no one knows what pertains to God except the Spirit of God. We have not received the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God, so that we may understand the things freely given us by God. And we speak about them not with words taught by human wisdom, but with words taught by the Spirit describing spiritual realities in spiritual terms. Now, the natural man does not accept what pertains to the Spirit of God, for to him it is foolishness, and he cannot understand it, because it is judged spiritually. The one who is spiritual, however, can judge everything, but is not subject to judgment by anyone. For who has known the mind of the Lord so as to counsel him? but we have the mind of Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response is, the Lord is just in all his ways. The Lord is just in all his ways. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness. The Lord is good to all and compassionate toward all his works. The Lord is just in all his ways. Let all your works give you thanks, O Lord, and let your faithful ones bless you. And let them discourse on the glory of your kingdom and speak of your might. The Lord is just in all his ways, making known to men your might and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is a kingdom for all ages, and your dominion endures through all generations. The Lord is just in all his ways. The Lord is faithful in all his words and holy in all his works. The Lord lifts up all who are falling and raises up all who are bowed down. The Lord is just in all his ways. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. A great prophet has arisen in our midst, and God has visited his people. Alleluia, alleluia. May Almighty God cleanse my heart and my lips, so I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel. The Lord be with you. A reading from the holy gospel according to St. Luke. Jesus went down to Capernaum, a town of Galilee. He taught them on the Sabbath. And they were astonished at his teaching because he spoke with authority. In the synagogue, there was a man with the spirit of an unclean demon. And he cried out in a loud voice, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Jesus rebuked him and said, Be quiet, come out of him. Then the demon threw the man down in front of them and came out of him without doing him any harm. They were all amazed and said to one another, What is there about his word? For with authority and power he commands the unclean spirits, and they come out. And news of him spread everywhere in the surrounding region. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, our first reading in Paul's first letter to the people of Corinth, we hear about the Spirit, the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, if you will. And we hear that even the depths of God are scrutinized by the Spirit, who is part of the triune God, of course. And it's the difference between the natural man and the one who is spiritual. The natural man closes out the Holy Spirit from his or her heart. The natural person, I should say. And to see the wisdom and the gifts of the Spirit in another, when they are closed off, it seems like utter foolishness and folly. Like, what the heck are you doing? You know? But if we're spiritual, if we're spiritual. We share in the mind of God. If we allow the Holy Spirit to infuse us, we can share 
that mind of God. That's what Jesus wants. That's why he sent the Holy Spirit after he ascended to be with us until the end of time. It's how he established his church. This marked for having followed what has always and everywhere been taught as Catholic for the last 2,000 years. And if it's deviated from that, then it's not of the Spirit. The gospel. The gospel is very interesting, too, because Jesus is up north in Capernaum. And within the synagogue, while Jesus is teaching, there is a possessed person. And the demon, the demon recognizes Jesus as the Holy One of God. Make no mistake about it, my brothers and sisters, demons are Christians. They believe that Christ is the Son of God. They not only believe it, they know it. That's why they rebelled. Because the demons are mere angels without bodies. Humans are spirit and body, higher ranking than the angels. And Jesus became one like us, not like the angels and demons. So they know, they know who Jesus is. But they hate him. And that's the difference, I hope, between us and the evil ones in the world. We love Jesus because we know he is the way, the truth, and the life. The demons hate that because they want everything for themselves. And we as humans with free will, just like the angels, can choose to be with the demons or with Jesus. It's up to us. But why would we want to be with the demons, the rebels, the ones who want to tear down instead of build up, the ones who want eternal damnation instead of eternal life in paradise? And Jesus has power over these demons. He rebuked him and called him out. I was watching a movie last night, being a holiday, called The Deliverance. The Deliverance. It's about an exorcism. It's kind of fictionalized in the movie, but the real movie did use an actual exorcism in a Catholic priest. The movie used a Protestant minister and the mother of the, of the child who was possessed. But even though the movie takes place in Pittsburgh, the real story, it's based on a real story that happened in Gary, Indiana back in 2014. So we know these demonic possessions continue even today. And we all need to be careful not to open ourselves up to that. And we do that by allowing sins into our life. There are portals. Most obvious example is like a Ouija board. But also, sins that cry to heaven. If we have willingly procured an abortion, that gives us a portal. If we have willingly practiced sodomy with the same, same gender. That is a portal, believe it or not. It can come into us. The demons can come in and take over. And like I said, it still continues to this day. But the name of Jesus is so powerful it can expel those demons. So we, we should cleave as closely as we can to Jesus. Because he has the authority to keep evil at bay. But we need to use our free will to do so. We need to choose Jesus instead of sin. We need to choose the right instead of the wrong. We need to choose good instead of evil. It's so easy to choose evil in this world because they make it look so attractive. It's like a sugar coating a piece of dog poop. It might look really good. It might look like even an M&M or a Tootsie Roll. But inside is dog poop. That's how Satan disguises himself. It looks attractive. But once we eat the dog poop, that's what we got. It's nothing but crap. But with Jesus, it may not look attractive at first. Maybe like a deformed 
looking apple. It's not quite shaped right, but you take a bite of it, it's the most succulent, juicy thing you've ever had. So my brothers and sisters, let us always be on the lookout for evil disguising itself as good. And avoid that. And choose to cleave to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, following what he has taught, following the churches that teach what has always and everywhere been taught as Catholic. If we do that, and we stay on the straight and narrow, we come back to Jesus if we fall, then we will be on the way to eternal life. But if we allow ourselves to sin without repentance, we'll continue to sin worse and worse, and eventually we will find ourselves in everlasting torment. The choice is ours. The choice is ours. And if we are possessed, let's seek out a priest who can exercise that demon in the name of our Lord and Savior because he wants to save us all. In the name of Jesus, we'll cast out any demon in this world. In the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Having heard the word of God, let us act upon it by seeking in prayer the gifts God has promised. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, that we may experience an ever deeper conversion of mind and heart as we allow God's word to instruct and free us, we pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. That the Spirit will renew the dedication of those working for peace and help all to work together to defeat the common enemies of disease, ignorance, abortion, euthanasia, poverty, and communism. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. That peace and reconstruction become realities in the Ukraine, the Middle East, and every tortured land, and that our armed forces are protected. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are suffering in body, mind, or spirit, and those on our parish prayer list, we pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For our needs that we hold deep in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died and those who will die today, that they may rest in the peace of our Lord. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. Father, we ask you to hear and answer these prayers, both spoken and unspoken, and those which remain in our hearts. We ask these through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are sure and altogether righteous. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. With your goodness, we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. May it become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this wine and water, may we come to share the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, through your goodness of this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands may it become our spiritual drink. <coughs> Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Come, Holy Spirit, and bless this sacrifice that we have prepared for the glory of your holy name. Lord, wash away my iniquity. Cleanse me from my sin. Receive this offering, most holy trinity, which we make in memory of the passion, resurrection, and ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ, and in honor of the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints. 
May they whose memory we honor on earth intercede for us in heaven. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice from my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for the benefit of his holy church. Gracious Father, as we present these gifts before you, we ask that what, whenever we struggle with the evil about us, whenever human traditions obscure your will, draw us to a more zealous obedience. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, all-powerful and ever-living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks to your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Out of love, you called us to life. You give us our daily bread and the bread of life, and by your protection and assistance, you see to our every need. And so with trust, we commend our day to your fatherly care. Therefore, with the angels and archangels, with all the saints and the entire church, we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating unceasingly, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy Sacrifice of the Mass continues with Eucharistic Prayer 3, found on page 84, if you're following along. We acclaim you, Holy Lord, glorious in power. Your mighty works reveal your wisdom and love. You have formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into our care, so that, in obedience to you, our Creator, we might rule and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy, you came to our help, so then seeking you, we might find you. Again and again, you called us into covenant with you. And through the prophets, you taught us to hope for salvation. Gracious God, you loved the world so much that in the fullness of time, you sent your only Son to be our Savior, incarnate by the Holy Spirit. Born of the Virgin Mary, he lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor, he proclaimed the good news of salvation, the prisoner's freedom, the sorrowful joy. To fulfill your purpose, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the grave, destroyed death, and made the whole creation new, and that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us. He sent the Holy Spirit, his own first gift for those who believe, to complete his work in the world, and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. When the hour had come for him to be glorified, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper with them, he took bread. And when he gave thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, and said, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which is given for you. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. We now celebrate the memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory, and offering to you from the gifts you have given us this bread and this cup, we praise you and bless you. Together, we praise you, we bless you, we give thanks to you, and we praise you, Lord our God. We pray to you, Lord our God. We pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts sanctifying them and showing them to be holy gifts for your holy people. The bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. And that all who share this bread and this cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name. Remember your one holy Catholic and apostolic church redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. Remember Anthony, our prime bishop, Charles, our administrator, and all who minister in your church. Remember all your people and those who seek your truth, especially those in our parish prayer list and 
those who have not yet been converted by the Holy Spirit. Remember all who have died in the peace of Christ whose faith is known to you alone especially our friends and family members who have passed. Bring them into the place of eternal joy and light and grant that we may find our inheritance the Blessed Virgin Mary with our ancestors in faith, the prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and give you glory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, creator of all, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. Page 95, let us pray together with confidence to the Father in the words our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all anxiety. So we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Come a blessing which we bless. Is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Because there is one bread, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. May the union of divinity and humanity in Jesus Christ bring us sanctification and eternal life. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Do not look at our sins, but on the faith of your church. Grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom where you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. On you stay, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. On you stay, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. On you stay, qui tolis peccata mundi, Dona nobis pace. We say together the first communion prayer found on page 97, if you're following along. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free me from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me faithful to your teaching and never let me be parted from you. I will take the bread of heaven and call upon the name of the Lord, Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. May the body of Christ bring me to everlasting life. May the blood of Christ bring me to everlasting life. Join me now in the act of spiritual communion. Most loving Jesus, I adore you in the most blessed sacrament in which you are truly present. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart and heal my soul. I embrace you and unite myself with you. May I never be separated from you. Inflame my heart with the fire of your love, my Lord and Savior. Lord, my possessions of pure heart, that which I have taken as food, may the gift I receive bring me healing and strength now and forever. See to it that no one captivate you with an empty, seductive philosophy according to human tradition, according to the elemental powers of the world, 
and not according to Christ. Let us pray. Almighty God, by the grace of this Holy Communion, recreate in us the image of your Son, so that we, putting aside all human vanities, may receive his word, which alone can save us. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Join me now in the prayer of St. Michael. Holy Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And to you, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who wander through the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Join me now in prayer for peace with the prayer of St. Francis. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there's hatred, let me so love. Where there's injury, pardon. Where there's doubt, faith. Where there's despair, hope. Where there's darkness, light. And where there's sadness, joy. My master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, thank you so much for joining us for Holy Mass today. I pray that you can join us on Wednesday and Thursday at 9 a.m. Central Daylight Time, Saturday at 5 p.m. for the vigil of the Solemnity of Brotherly Love, and Sunday at 9 a.m. So we hope that you have a wonderful day. Take care of yourselves, take care of each other. Remain in the state of grace. Spread evil and communism wherever you find it. Spread joy in the word of God wherever you go. Holy God, we praise thy name. Lord of all, we bow before thee. All on earth thy scepter claim. All in heaven above adore thee, infinite thy vast domain, everlasting is thy reign, infinite thy vast domain, everlasting is thy reign. 